Quandary Peak is one of two Colorado 14ers whose name roughly denotes a mystery or a state of being puzzled or perplexed, the other being Conundrum Peak in the Elk Range. Quandary is the highest mountain in what is, what is known as the Ten Mile Range, which begins near the town of Frisco in the north and continues west of Breckenridge for 12 miles and contains Quandary near its south end. The Ten Mile Range is actually geographically continuous with the Mosquito Range to its south, although the Continental Divide does run between the two named ranges. This distant view of the mountain was taken from the top of Mount Massive to the southwest. The distant view here is shown from the northwest, from the top of Mount of the Holy Cross. These closer views were taken from along the mountain's East Ridge route, while this one was taken from its West Ridge route. In 1844, explorer John Fremont saw the peak while crossing over what would later become Hoosier Pass, and by the early 1860s it became the site of frenzied mining activity along with the other mountains of the range, most notably for its silver content. The name Quandary allegedly comes from the inability of some miners of that era to identify a type of ore found on the mountain. But as it turned out, this wasn't to be the only puzzling thing about the mountain. Before 1873, it had also been known variously by the names McCullough's Peak, Ute Peak, and Hoosier Peak. That year, the Hayden Survey Atlas designated it as Quandary Peak, finally and appropriately settling this additional quandary about quandary with the name Quandary. <laughs> the West Ridge route up the mountain is a largely off-trail, rugged adventure whose endurance stats are mild, but which involves a fair amount of exposure, steep and or loose terrain, considerable route finding, and climbing Class 3 rock. As an alternative to descending the West Ridge, you can get back to the Blue Lakes Trailhead by descending the South, or Cristo Coular, shown here, mostly along its west side. Although this does cut down on the total distance, this way is comprised of loose rock during summer conditions and is quite steep. To reach the Blue Lakes Trailhead for this route, take Highway 9 to a point about 8 miles south of Breckenridge, turn west onto the Blue Lakes Road, and then go just over 2 miles to reach the trailhead at the dam. If the gate below the dam is closed as it was on this occasion, you can park just below the gate and walk an additional 3 quarters of a mile and 300 vertical feet from the gate to reach the dam. The East Ridge route, which is the standard way up and down, couldn't provide a much starker contrast. Its endurance stats are only slightly greater than those of the West Ridge route, but it is a smooth Class 1 trail walk up the entire way and has become one of the most popular routes on any Colorado 14er. As of this video, a parking fee and reservation system is in place during certain months for the East Quandary Trailhead. The lot can be reached by following the Blue Lakes Road for several hundred feet, turning right onto the McCullough Gulch Road, and following that for a few hundred yards. The actual trail begins just slightly further up the road from the lot. On this occasion, I went in a loop, ascending the West Ridge Route and descending the East Ridge Route. Of course, at the end I had to ascend the Blue Lakes Road for close to a mile and a half back to the car just below the gate, which adds a bit to the endurance stats, but this avoids descending the rugged West Ridge and gave me the chance to show the East Ridge route as well. Anyway, enjoy the footage. It's about 5.30 in the morning. I'm going up the Blue Lakes Road here on, on my way to the trailhead for the West Ridge of Quandary Peak. I've arrived at this parking lot and at this closed gate. So I'm gonna have to walk up the rest of the road up to the upper lake there, that's the dam right there, and the lower lake below it. So I'm going to get started on foot, pass by this gate.
continuing up this road here toward the dam. So I made it up here to the dam and this parking area, which it looks like might be the usual parking area for this. Uh, here's the dam. My understanding is the route and the trail actually starts up on this corner of the lake. And I'm going to follow this path up to it. To the beginning of the trail it's almost six o'clock and here's where it starts you go around this far end of the dam here and my understanding is the path kind of parallels this upper blue lake here for a fairly short distance before it diverges away from it all right i'm coming back here momentarily closer to the lake down here. Okay, after paralleling the lake across a little bit of talus there, I'm continuing along this path and I'm trying to find the point where the path up towards the route diverges away from these social paths along the lake. I see this one right here heading into the vegetation. I think I'm going to try that. So as I angled up off that social trail, I'm crossing this field of boulders right here. And I opted not to go up that because it's not clear where this path goes. Although it may go this way. I'm going to continue along this path through this foliage. So at this point here, it looks like that path goes through more foliage. And I went... A little ways through it, it looks like a kind of a dead end, so kind of backtracked. I'm going to try angling back up this way instead, see where that goes. So that has led me up to this steeper section of that path alongside this creek. I'm going to continue up this. So this path, this steep path is discernible, but barely. You can see it's kind of defined by actual foot placements here. As I go steeply up, I should be arriving at a basin up here at some point. Yeah, it's a little bit rockier going as I get up here farther. And after walking up through a section of talus, the path is now more dirt and mud as it proceeds along and across this section of stream here. After that stream crossing back there, the path becomes more well-defined as it kind of begins to level out up here. So I've now entered into the aforementioned basin. I'm probably at about 12,300 feet right now. You can see some of these old dilapidated mine remnants here. I'm going to be going on a fairly level stretch for a little bit here through the basin. And the next stage is going to be 
reaching this gully up here, the steeper part. Then I'll have to find a way up. I'm going to say that the path crosses the stream right here. watery talus here. <laughs> I'm up here now, close to probably about 12-4, having made my way across that level stretch of the lower part of the basin. Uh, and like I said back then, the next stage of this is to proceed up this gully right here. And I think obviously the right side with the water and the steeper rocks is to be avoided. As is, of course, this substantial bank of snow in the center. So, like I read in the literature, I'm going to try to find a line to the left of the snow there. The best line might be under the snow, but I can't use that right now, obviously. I'm kind of looking at this possibility right here to, to its immediate left. I think I might try that and see what happens. Obviously there's probably options even farther to the left, but I'm going to go for this, I think. So I've begun up the lower parts of the gully. I'm kind of on this uh, rudimentary grassy part of the path here uh, about to approach the uh, lower part of the rocks here so there's a large snowbank over here I've reached the lower part of the rocks and I kind of have a, a choice here looks like I can, go, I can go around to the left there and up that way maybe a little more gradually or just go straight up that part. I think I'm gonna try straight up this part and see how it goes for a minute. You can see I'm coming up just to the left of the large snowbank here, up along these rocks. So far, so good, although they are a little bit loose. Mixed in with some gravel here. So you gotta be careful. There's the gully portion I've come up so far. And it's getting a little more of a challenge here, as you can see. Yeah, it looked like that kind of worked out. Now another choice here, do I want to go around to the left of this big rock here or around to its right. I'm going to try around to the right and see where that gets me. I 
you know, kind of a little bit of a drop off here next to the snow, but looks like a fairly reasonable path up through this section. Uh, so the path's over here. Small cairn. Okay, it looks like it's opening up up here a little bit. So I'm up here now at about 12.8 in this more talus ridden upper part of the basin. Uh, I believe now I'll need to turn a little bit more to the right or north of the direction I had been going in. And this part does have some fairly substantial cairns as you can see here's a look back in the other direction um, and a look up towards the upper reaches of Quandary itself and the rugged west ridge that I'll be negotiating here shortly. And I'm continuing through the upper reaches of the basin, uh, probably at close to 13,000 now. And I'm gonna go on the ascent again up this stretch of rocks as I gradually make my way out of the basin. Uh, I gotta go up this stretch of rocks, avoiding the snow and my goal is somewhere in that vicinity right there and eventually up up there somewhere I will merge with the West Ridge itself. So I'm making my way up this mid-sized talus so far up out of this basin. I've chosen to go along the left side of this rock right here. Well, shall I go that way? Or that way? Try this way. Looks like a little steeper ascent right here. You can see maybe that cairn up there. Like a path. down looking at the upper and lower part of the basin. As up at the west ridge there. As I'm continuing northwest out of the basin, it appears I could either again try to go up that way or stay this way. I think I'm gonna stay to the right once again. So up here now, I am confronted with this large snowbank, and I can either try to go around it up this way, or once again stay to the right and negotiate these rock slabs and rocks over here, which I might as well do because if I go the other way, 
I'm gonna have to possibly go across the snow at some point anyway, so I'm gonna continue along this way. And the best route may be covered up by the snow, so I'm gonna just have to figure out a way to go that is below it. Looks like it shouldn't be too much of a problem. There's some water running under the rocks here. And I've had to go down just a little bit before heading back up. This is kind of mid to small size talus so far here. A little bit loose so far, but not too bad. It's either step across this bit of snow or go all the way back down there. I think I'm gonna step across it. There we go. Do this way again, I think. Which way? I step up here to these rocks on the left. See what I can discern from up there. Now over there, stay going up this way. A little looser up here. And also, as maybe you can see, got some wet rocks, running water, Always be careful of that. Looks like I'm getting up out of this incline right up here. Continuing toward the ridge, found this kind of nifty slab to go up right here as I've emerged into the sun. So I'm up here now, I think at about 13.3, having made my way up out of the basin and the next stage is to turn kind of toward the north and traverse alongside the right side of this pile of rocks up here. And then at, that, at the end of that, I will have reached the west ridge. And after that, the more difficult ascent up the west ridge into the summit of Quandary Peak, which you're looking towards right there, will commence. So, we get started on this path. 
this is pretty level traverse so far. Alright, so I've reached the west ridge. I'm up here at about 13,400 feet now. And now is where it gets even more real. I've only got, I say only, I've got another probably eight to 900 vertical feet to go before the summit. But there's going to be a lot of challenges between here and there. And at this point, I'm also going to start to go in a more east direction where up to this point the entire time I've been going in an overall northwest direction so now I'm kind of doubling back to get up to the top and as I understand it the first challenge is going to be to go around some rock towers on their right side You're looking at these initial towers here. You know, the path continues back the other way, but you know, I always love to give you these shots down these steep gullies off to the other sides. A little bit of loose sand to deal with right there as I continue past these towers. The stretch is pretty level for the most part. Yeah, parts of this here can get a little precipitous. So my understanding is that at some point soon I'm going to reach the end of that stretch of going alongside these towers and emerge back onto the crest of the west ridge where I will then cross over to the left for a while. Um, I'm not sure if I continue along to the right here or go up right here. So I think I'm going to go up right here and see what I can see at least from up here.
Okay. So I'm at the top of the ridge again. Uh, hopefully this is where you begin this traverse along the other side right there. See if I can find any definitive path as I go. So I found what seems to be a rudimentary path now along the left side of the ridge. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can stick with that. My understanding is I'm to gain enough vertical feet on this stretch to the point where I reach about 14,000. So far this path along the left side of the ridge is pretty close to the top of the ridge. I'm getting, getting an elevation on it fairly steeply. There's the basin on the other side. So far, this is a pretty discernible path and fairly straightforward to follow. That's the direction I'm coming from, from up the west ridge, and continuing onward until I reach about 14,000, and then things are going to change, and I'll face some substantial difficulties. Pretty arduous incline on this part. A little bit of looseness. Okay, it looks like the path is now coming up to the cruxes and I'm doing a switch back right here back up towards the top I believe so I've reached the ridge crest once again I'm about at about 14,000 right here and this is where the crux section begins uh, it looks like you want to go of around to the right of this rock right here. If we can go between these slabs here. Loose dirt here. Grab onto the sides. More old mine ruins up here. Imagine mining way up here. Wow. See a cairn up there. Well, interesting. Uh, looks like I have the choice of sides here. I'll try the right here see what that does hmm 
And I can go right up this part right here or up that part. You know, uh, honestly, this one on the left looks less loose than the other one. I think I'll try it. Might be a little steeper, but still pretty loose, though. Yeah, that's loose. And I don't know really what the recommended path up this part is. I'm just kind of going for it. Uh, this crack here looks fairly negotiable. And yeah, these rocks are definitely pretty solid. Yeah. Right or left? Let's try the left here. Huh, interesting. Okay. Looks like there's ground there to make it my way between these two bumps. I was afraid initially there was going to be a big deep crack, but nope. I think I can actually go across and over to that next one. Yep. I think I can bypass this rock on the left here. And here's one final tower of this stretch uh, that I'll have to go around and then I'll reach this steep wall on the left of it here that I've got to go up. I guess I'll try around to the left of this rock again. And there is the next obstacle going up that pretty loose looking steep rock path right there. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad to me. The looseness is my biggest concern. So we'll see how that goes. I was looking down the slopes to the north on the left, and there's the last in the series of kind of difficult rocks I came up and around to get to this point. Looking at the uh, gully down to the right, right on my ascent. And now I'm going to go up this aforementioned steep dirt path, see how that goes.
Yeah, I think on this stretch, I just need to make an effort to avoid the looseness as much as possible. And where available, step on more solid rock and grab onto more solid handholds. Like so far, they seem to be amply available. I could do that way. I'm gonna go around to the right. Kind of more solid slabs here. Yeah, much nicer. And back up to this opening. Emerge out onto this kind of uh, precipice here. All right. Here's the direction of that last steep dirt wall. Now, I can either continue up to the right here or around to the left. My understanding is I need to temporarily reach the crest of the ridge again. I'm going to come down here to the left and uh, see if that doesn't bring me around to it. If not, I can backtrack. I don't think I want to go down that far. I'm going to go back up here. <laughs> All right, here I am at the crest again. And up there a little ways, you can see a few bumps ahead of me, that crux wall up there. I gotta negotiate these intervening towers. Before I even get to that though, coming down alongside the right of this rock tower here. I don't think I want to... I don't think I want to go on that side. This looks interesting. I guess I will attempt to climb up right there. And down around to the left side of another tower here. Kind of zigzagging back and forth between all these towers. Yeah, this looks a little tricky too. Not helped by this little bit of snow here. You kind of have to step across. 
Otherwise you get led down that steep dirt slope there. Looks like I've got to step right here and then get to that rock block on that side. I want to try to do it without stepping on that snow. It's pretty hard, really slick. I'm going to grab that slab right there and then pivot onto that rock. There we go. Well, looks like a path continues around to the left. Hmm, that looks tough. I'm gonna see what's back the other way. Otherwise, you gotta go up this and then down. That looks like I'm gonna be trying that. Okay, now this I was told about, and this is actually the first of two walls that you have to go up before you get to the summit. And I believe the next one is the Crux Crux. Although this one looks fairly cruxy in its own right. Get up to that. All right, now I'm going to tackle this crack here, and the question is, do I go on the rock to the left or the rock to the right? Uh, doesn't look obvious to me. It looks like the left side here is going to be harder to on the bottom part, and the right side looks harder on the top part. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to opt for the level lower difficulties that look like they're on the left rather than the upper right part. At least that's what I'm going with. Okay, so now I'm up to the upper left portion. Wasn't too bad. You know, after, after climbing up the left side of the crack, I've gone up and kind of explored up around here to try to find where you're supposed to down climb to, to get to the bottom of the final crux. And it all looks pretty precarious on that side, so 
I'm going to try to come back across the crack and over to the other side of it and see what may be over here that's more promising. Yeah, this already looks a lot better. So it looks like I probably have to make my way down this part a ways and then back around to the left to get to the final crux wall. Really nice day out up to this point or morning. Some loose stuff. Grab onto the side. All right. Down another gully. And I think here's where I need to wrap back around up to the left to get to the bottom of that final crux wall. It's pretty loose again. Now in here, there's a limited ability to grab onto the wall on the side. There's that last tower up there and I just came up this loose stretch right here after that last crux and I'm going to continue around to the left of this final wall here and get to the bottom of it. bottom of it and my understanding is you want to proceed up to just to the left of this large crack here uh, I'm told the bottom is a little easier there's a little bit of a stepped area right there but then as you go up you're faced with some looser rock so, yes, let's go for it. Look at it, it's almost like it was meant to be there. few options here. I don't think I like that one there on the left. I'm going to try maybe a combination between this crack here on the right and this thing on the its left. So you can't really get into this crack completely because of this rock here that's overhanging. Find some footholds on the left side. A 
looks like I'm gonna go for ending up not go for ending up up there but continue up this this part of it a little dicey not too terrible though now I've come up here to this pile And it looks like I've made it through the final crux. I got a little ways left to the summit there where you can see the throngs already accumulated. Go up these final talus slopes. So I'm heading off the top of Quandary now. Um, there's basically three choices for my descent. I could either descend the way I came or down the really steep 
think it's called Cristo Kumar. That's right there too to lead me back to the same trailhead or go down the east slopes into a trailhead that's two miles from where I parked but it's an easy descent so I'm going to opt for that and hike the two miles back up to the car so it'll give me some extra photo ops for the standard route Coming to the end of the East Quandary Peak Trail. And I gotta follow this road down for a while to the East Quandary Trailhead and then actually hike back up from the East Quandary Trailhead to where my car is parked. So we've got a little ways to go yet. And the east corner of the parking lot must be 50 cars in that. And head up the uh, Blue Lakes Road to where my car is. I'm still walking up the Blue Lakes Road to my car at a fairly steady pace. 
I'm doing pretty well endurance wise. Uh, I hope it's not too much farther though. <laughs> It took me about 6 hours and 15 minutes to complete the West Ridge Up, East Ridge Down tour of Quandary, which would have been less, but the Crux West Ridge stretch is more time consuming. Although fun, this stretch is nevertheless tedious, loose in many places, and complicated, so definitely study the route thoroughly before embarking, lest you get into a quandary as to how to proceed. On another note, on certain occasions when there's more than one route to the top of a mountain, and especially when the routes are very different, when getting to the top I felt a sort of meeting of different worlds. I think this occasion was the most pronounced I've yet experienced in that regard. On my ascent of the west side I saw a total of zero people, and coming down the east side I passed by a total of 149. And now that I ponder it, I seem to sense this more and more even when I'm on the more beaten path myself. But so anyway, that's the tour of Quandary, a pretty varied mountain I'd have to say. See you on the next one. <laughs>